Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. As we observe the Kashmir Solidarity Day, we um, all fragments of society in Pakistan, all our leaders come together to express our solidarity, our unflinching support with the Kashmiri cause. Um, we, of course, the Prime Minister also said today the whole of Pakistan comes together to express its unflinching solidarity and support to Kashmiri brothers and sisters who remain undeterred by the oppressive Indian occupation of protests in the struggle for UN sanctioned right to self determination. People of IIOJK are waging a relentless struggle of epic proportions to realize their dream of freedom from the Indian yoke. Through their sacrifices, they have kept the torch of freedom burning. It is my faith that their dreams will soon see the light of day. Um, of course, uh, this confidence, this hope is, is shared by all of Pakistan uh, that there will be a day which uh, will mark uh, the end of uh, the, the Kashmiri oppression and uh, you know, will they will be able to see the reward of their struggles? We also had the ISPR say that services chiefs, CCJCSC chiefs, and AFs of Pakistan pay tribute to the indigenous indig indigenous freedom struggle of brave Kashmiris for their right of self determination, as per UN resolutions and aspirations of people of Kashmir. No amount of HRV and atrocities can human rights violations and atrocities can su suppress the spirit of Kashmiris for freedom. Um, to talk about the Kashmiri struggle, to talk about the Kashmiri cause that marks today, I have with me Nasir Kadri, who's an advocate, executive director, legal forum for Kashmir. Thank, Thank you, you for being with us. I also have with me Nida Salam Chaudhary, who is a human rights activist. Thank you for being with us. G. Now, sub, uh, you know, of course, this is this is a day where we commemorate, we we uh, you know, we express our our support for the Kashmiri cause. But we also want to talk about why you know the world has not reacted the way it should have reacted to, to the kind of oppression that we've seen in Kashmir, which is perhaps unparalleled in a lot of ways. Um, and the fact that you know there is unfortunately uh, some sort of a, a, you know complacence one can call it from the world. Why? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me today. <coughs> as a son of the soil and uh, as a Kashmiri, uh, first of all, we are very thankful for the government of Pakistan and uh, of course to the people of Pakistan standing with the Kashmir. Ed. But before talking about the international community's silence or their mm -hmm. selective approach. Pakistan as a legal party, uh, we, they have to do something beyond than the symbolic, okay. beyond the solidarity, because the situation on, uh, on ground is uh, terrible, it is horrendous, mm. particularly post 5th of August when your territory is uh, completely annexed and they are trying to change the demography of the region. Mm. And then now a uh, present situation is uh, uh, bulldozing the residential civilian population, their homes. Mm. So Pakistan needs to do beyond uh, solidarity, uh, working on the pragmatic uh, uh, efforts. Now talking about the international community, international what community. About, let's let's go bit by bit. What about the role of the UN? Uh, let me see. Uh, when you talk of the UN, UN is governed by the ch UN ch uh, Charter. Hmm. But uh, as a student of law, uh, UN has always been selective, or the ch this Charter or the international law has ever failed the Palestinians and Kashmiris because hmm. of the. Uh, of, of course, the great powers, the great games. Uh, India is, uh, it, it's an economic hub for uh, countries and the strategic relations. Mm. Uh, they have always, uh, these international communities, are particularly the actors which matter before the UN or which mm. uh, uh, where this charter, it has an efficacious, uh, it mm. uh, efficates. So uh, it has always served or uh, it has al al already, it always take the side of the oppressor. Okay. So that is the, uh, the On situation. On that note, I will come back to you. Ji, Nida, uh, Nasir Saab is saying that, you know, that as far as the charter is concerned, it takes the side of the oppressor. Would you agree with that? And, you know, the way that we have gone about it, let's talk about the legal side of things. Uh, you know, how would you, of course, I mean, I don't think there are any two opinions on the fact that Pakistan has done it, uh, its uttermost to try to emphasize on the struggle of the Kashmiris. We've always stood by the Kashmiris, regardless of when and how and who um, is governing Pakistan. So as far as the legal side of things are concerned, where do you think 
we've been, you know, should have, perhaps Pakistan should have emphasized more, Pakistan should have worked harder in where, in what areas? All right, uh, primitively, I would like to start that, uh, start with the doctrine that um, uh, Kashmir Solidarity Day is the metaphor uh, of, um, uh, of an everlasting social, cultural, and religious relationship between Pakistan and Kashmir, mm -hmm. um, and the people of Kashmir, the Pakistani state, um, its previous governments, the current government, and the people of Pakistan have always supported uh, the people of Kashmir uh, through thick and thin. For mm -hmm. instance, when pallet bullets were used against children, uh, when um, uh, fundamental human rights were violated, um, when uh, uh, enforced disappearance um, occurred back in the days, and still in today's time and age, extrajudicial killings and all that. So um, as far as Pakistan is concerned, um, Pakistan played um, a, a very pivotal role in terms of a very vocal advocate of the violations of human rights and mm -hmm. um, New Delhi um, should consider uh, the breach of international commitments, the breach, the breach of Uni United Nations universal declarations and resolutions and all that. So in that uh, doctrine... Um, but when we see, but, but there is, as far as New Delhi is concerned, there is this adamant, uh, you know, refusal to accept any of that. There is also, you know, a categorical, um, you know, there, is, there are moves to, to change reality. There are moves to, what can one say, as, as far as propaganda is concerned, we have to sit here and acknowledge today that India is perhaps better at propaganda than Pakistan. Um, you know, of course, we have tried to show the real picture of what's happening in Kashmir to the world. We have tried to tell the world about the Kashmiri struggle. But the way that they they try to camouflage what's happening, you know, when they talk about when India talks about Modi's India and they talk about it being, uh, you know, a, a secular state where they protect, uh, you know, all all minorities. Of course, they haven't been able to fool the world entirely. But is it about interests? Oh yes, it is about the interest of without mm. any doubt, yes. Uh, they have played uh, very well at International Forum in terms of fooling the world. Um, I strongly believe that New Delhi mm. should step down mm. uh, from traditional, orthodox, um, um, uncooperative, maladroit policy of uh, intransigence. Mm. And um, uh, the world is aware about the old drama in relation to the violations of human rights, in relation to the standing of Modi's India um, in terms of the Kashmiri so, people. So where does the facade break and how does the facade break? Uh, you know what, like, I strongly believe that the international community should, uh, should intervene, uh, United Nations and uh, uh, mm. as in accordance of the mm. uh, UN Security mm. Council resolutions, um, the international community, if I would like to give the uh, example of um, uh, different political parties of mm. the European Parliament, um, mm. a Labour Party of the British Parliament, um, um, you know, uh, because they all have a soft corner in terms of the Kashmir issue and the people of Kashmir and Pakistan. As far as Kashmir is concerned, they have full um, belief on the Pakistan foreign policy and they do mm. consider Pakistan as a reliable and, rel uh, and reliable and relevant um, advocate of this issue nationally and internationally as well. On that note, let me come back to you. We also have with us Ali Raza Sayyid, who's chairman of Kashmir Council. EU. Uh, gee, uh, Raza Saab, can you hear me? Yeah. Please. We've been talking about the world and the role of the world and the fact that, you know, of course, we've seen, um, I think we've, we've talked about this from time to time um, with you also, the role of the world, the way that we envisage the world to react to the kind of atrocities that we are seeing at this time. And the fact that it's constantly remiss in, in, in doing its duty um, as far as doing what Pakistan can, where is the next step in your opinion? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, you know, uh, if you see uh, there is a war going on between Russia and Ukraine and you see mm -hmm. how the international community is uh, active and proactive in, in that uh, to, to bring the peace or uh, to uh, extend the the conflict but why because the the countries the people they have their own interest and because of that interest uh, the western world is uh, uh, supporting ukraine and in on the same time if you see in kashmir the india has done the same as uh, uh, russia has done with ukraine because the powerful uh, 
attacks to the uh, weak and uh, the Indian security forces and all the occupation forces, they are uh, trying to use the maximum force and to subdue the people of Jammu and Kashmir for the last 75 years. And there, there are United Nations resolutions, there are UN Human Rights Council reports, there are uh, different re resolutions in European Parliament and other in international institutions. Now, the Khurram Parvez, uh, who is the human rights defender, he is going to get uh, an award on 16th of uh, uh, February. But mm. uh, practically, uh, when we need their support to help uh, end this occupation, to help end the suffering of the people, uh, they, they say that we are, uh, we are in touch, we are watching closely, but they are not coming out as they came out uh, about Ukraine. So uh, I think there are double standards, but we have to uh, continue our, uh, our struggle. And Pakistan is the only country, I, I will say, Pakistan is the only country, only people uh, on earth who are supporting and who are standing by the people of Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, we thank to the Pakistani people for their support. But See, Ali, Ali Raza Sahib, I want to come back and talk about uh, particularly the role of the EU and you know how you envisage it will help and the way that the, you know the, the, the effort that they've made in trying to further this cause in a little bit. I want to go to Nasa Sahib Ji. Nasa Sahib, uh, let's talk about the, like you were earlier mentioning, let's talk about the legal side of things in particular. Where does, you know, as far as the UN Charter is concerned, the fact that, that you know, they are in violation of it is, is stark and clear, is it not? And of course, you know, on the other hand, they have to weigh in the, the economic realities, the political realities of the world, um, and we understand that. But where does the law aid us, and, you know, where does it tip that balance in our favor? Of course. <coughs> See, this, uh, as far as international law, since I told you that uh, there are complexities when you invoke the international law because of the interest. And, of course, international law, it's, it's now a weak law for, for, for the nations who are struggling the right to self-determination. But uh, keeping in view uh, the, these complexities and now the prolonged military occupation of 70, uh, more than 75 years and then uh, the uh, uh, war of liberation for mm. the right of self-determination. Mm. Uh, government of Pakistan, of course, uh, they can mm, think, uh, particularly the foreign office, uh, the present situations which are changing like the demographic change or the, uh, the persecution, uh, state-level mm. persecution mm. Uh, to the Kashmiris. Mm. The, the, I think this is a good case uh, uh, for the government of Pakistan uh, to take it as an advisory opinion. Okay. Akin to the situation of uh, the uh, Israeli, uh, pa Palestinian, uh, which they took, uh, the recently there was a development on this mm. advisory opinion to the Palestinian wall. Mm. And uh, you see, whatever, uh, whatever is going on in the Kashmir is basically an uh, uh, Israeli model. Mm. Demolitions, demographic change, change in the laws, and the, uh, the foreign investments, the aim. So uh, we have to think on those aspects. And uh, of course, uh, if uh, Ali, I, I'll agree with Ali Raza Said Saab that see uh, this uh, Ukraine and Russia co uh, conflict, this is, it has an international attention. You know, there are level, uh, debates, laws, uh, the Geneva Convention is being discussed uh, day in, day in and uh, day out, mm -hmm. the broader scope uh, to mm -hmm. be implemented. But unfortunately, when it comes to the uh, India, it, there's a ballot and violation of the law of war. Hmm. which support the Kashmiris. Uh, but uh, the people sitting outside the Pakistan, the friends of the Pakistan, and of course the diaspora has a role. Uh, if you identify the uh, war criminals, uh, you have to initiate now uh, proper sanctions and uh, start a uh, prosecution against the So uh, to start off with, you've established, let me go to Nida. Nida, there, there is an established, we, we acknowledge that there is an established bias against us. But we have to move on with that prerequisite anyway, right? That's a presumption that we have to take, that there is a bias against us, that, that you know, necessarily things are not on our side when we plead the cause of Kashmiris. When we start from that presumption, even so, where do we go? Of course, you know, we agitate. We try to bring it to, to the national, you know, to international community. We try to get them to realize what's happening, try to bring it to them. 
um, you know, as far as publications are concerned, as far as international publications are concerned, as far as various forums are concerned, as far as, you know, like EU Council is concerned, from of which Ali Raza Sayyid is a chairman. There are so many forums, but, you know, as far as uh, trying again, you know, how do we try to break into uh, the, the, this kind of, uh, you know, what can one say, unfairness that we are seeing? And we haven't been able to do that, unfortunately. I think it's time to acknowledge that also. All right, I would like to give a reference here of Article 370, Revocation okay. and, 30, um, and 35A. Mm -hmm. um, as far as um, India's mentality is concerned, there's no dubiety that India is not ready to solve the matter, uh, giving people their right of, uh, right of self-determination as in accordance of the United Nations resolution um, and as India is in a breach of Universal Declaration of Human Rights, India is in a breach of her own constitution, which ensures to protect fundamental human rights from Article 7 till Article 21A and 21 B. So, um, uh, you, you asked about how to... Do you to think it's also about consistency? Because when the abrogation of Article 370 and, you know, 35 happened, there was, of course, a lot of hue and cry. Do you think since then, perhaps it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's time to acknowledge that there has to be a consistent effort all over um, by the Kashmiri diaspora, by Pakistan here, by our, you know, intelligentsia all over the world? And that has to be very very consistent for there to be any kind of break in this uh, this mirage india has painted all right as far as Pakistan is concerned, um, I strongly believe that Pakistan has played a very significant role and Pakistan uh, um, vocally advocated uh, the issue of Kashmir nationally and internationally as well. Um, if, uh, if we consider 80s and 90s um, mm. era and in today's time and age, mm. uh, the way Pakistan uh, played her part um, is admirable across the globe and people are quite well aware about the Kashmir mm. issue across the globe. Mm. Um, I think uh, Pakistan played very well here. Uh, but uh, again, I would like to give a reference here. India say what it says that it's our internal matter as um, in relation to the uh, uh, revocation of Article 370. It's not the internal matter. It's an international dispute. And um, New Delhi... But has it not been acknowledged that it is an international dispute now, legally speaking? Well, I or think it's, still a, it's still a gray area. I'm asking as, as a lawyer, how do you look at that? It depends. It depends, like which forum we are we are considering what and referring. For instance, for instance, if I consider a Universal Declaration of Human Rights mm -hmm. um, violations and all that, um, it's been recognised that innocent children, weak women, were oppressed, suppressed. Uh, women were raped. Uh, do you remember where Indian military? For was example, I mean, I don't want to compare these causes because certainly, you know, wherever of oppression is happening, wherever women are being mistreated, wherever children are killed, um, wherever you know. Um, um, there is this kind of gross violations of human rights happening. It's wrong. But if you compare it to other parts in the world where this is also happening, do you feel that Kashmir takes a perhaps second, third, fourth place? Mm, to a certain extent, I can mm. agree with you. Or it figures at all. Well, to a certain extent, we can agree with you on, on, on mm. that aspect. Mm. To a certain mm. extent. Mm. How? I, and, 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 how does, and how does one change that? You know, keeping in 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 reality whatever the the political realities are whatever the economic realities are because we're working with those those are ex you know going to exist they're not going to change tomorrow mm -hmm. our position in the world is also unfortunately not going to change tomorrow mm -hmm. So with those realities, uh, you know, Nasa Saab, how, how does one work around <coughs> that? Uh, you, you, have, you have asked a very important question. Uh, does uh, UN really recognize uh, this as an international dispute? We mm. have to go uh, by that. Mm. It's not only uh, UN has recognized it as an international dispute. Mm. Uh, UN, uh, the definition of a dispute, if, mm. uh, if, you, if you go theoretically, uh, the, uh, Kelsen's theory, Kelsen says that if there is an issue, if, if uh, one issue, uh, there is an, uh, one issue of a state and mm. there comes a counter issue. Uh, the definition of a uh, dispute is an uh, issue at the counter issue. Kashmir in 1947 was about the India lodged a complaint in mm. United Nations. Pakistan res not only responded but filed a counter complaint. One, the second, this, so it is a recognized dispute under UN Charter. Mm. Now the second thing, India, Pakistan, they fought three major wars and contributed four I, on the Kashmir, specifically on the Kashmir. So, mm. under Geneva Convention, Common Article 2, the, ish, the, uh, the issue of the Kashmir, it falls within the ambit of international armed conflict mm. between the two contract, high contracting parties. Both India-Pakistan are 
high contracting parties uh, uh, pursuant to the Geneva Convention. So, mm -hmm. it is an international recognized dispute. And uh, additionally, the Kashmiris on ground are fighting for the right to self-determination. So, your additional protocol of the Geneva Convention, it supports you. It's an, it's an acknowledged uh, the, uh, international dispute. Uh, territorial as well as uh, this uh, 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 high, uh, the armed conflict and the case and the very unique case of the, uh, the, uh, the military occupation 75 years of military occupation it was a princely state India forcefully entered mm. into the yeah. so it, it is a recognized dispute but you have to play you know you have to build the narratives uh, you have to play it uh, since the Pakistan has some issues. What about you know, the building the narrative? Let's, let's talk about that as far as building the narrative is okay. concerned for Pakistan. Okay. Do you think that building the narrative has been, where, 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 is, where have we been, you know, perhaps not as successful as we could have been as far as well, building the narrative? Well, we were lacking for the last 30 mm. years. We consider the issue of Kashmir as in territory a small issue of a human rights abuse, mm. but it was not. It, is, it was a case of an, uh, a unique military occupation. It was a case of a prolonged military occupation. Mm. There were no human rights abuses, which is mm. a very small thing. Mm. It was a case of war crimes, a case of the crime against humanity, war criminals were there. We considered it as a, a small issue of the human rights abuse. Mm. Both the laws are applicable uh, in the occupied territory. One, it is uh, uh, laws related to the war and laws related to the peace, which are, of mm. course, a human rights uh, uh, laws. Mm. So we have to build a case on those lines mm. before I I I in, the, in the Pakistan as uh, and also mm. outside the Pakistan. Right. Let, me go, to, let me go to Ali Reza Sayyid on that. Gee, Ali Reza Saab, can you hear me? Do you, Ali Raza, sir, when we talk about building narrative is concerned, we've been talking about areas where we uh, may have not done as well as we should have, you know, as far as building narratives is concerned. Do you think that, you know, Pakistan, um, of course, on one, there are multiple fronts where we can fight this, you know, as for the Kashmiri people. And one of them is, of course, you know, at the UN, on the international forums, within the international community, but also within the intelligentsia of the world, you know, as far as taking it, as far as uh, the authors and the writers, there, there have been instances where we've seen even the authors in India have written about the treatment of Kashmiris. They've written about the unfairness at this time prevalent within India, um, in, in the occupied Kashmir particularly. But as far as taking it to... G, can you hear me? G, can you hear me? Hello. G, so taking it, taking it beyond that, taking me? it to the international community, is it, is it about the, you know, Kashmiri diaspora around the world? Is it about, you know, holding meets, rallies, um, you know, it, and taking it up on by by using literary means for example by using um, the media for example those things perhaps we need to do more now now sir the same question to you uh, when, when we talk about uh, we'll hmm. start from the building the narrative of Gee. course uh, we need to uh, do uh, both things like Building the narratives, uh, particularly, uh, you have to apply the, the framework which is applicable uh, for the Kashmir. And on this, uh, but it would be mere symbolic. Uh, we need to do a practical things. The practicality of the, this issue is that uh, Pakistan has to take uh, this matter on the pragmatic fronts. Uh, like, uh, as I earlier told, hmm. uh, let us at least let foreign office at least debate about the advisory opinion of the Kashmir. Because hmm. As a student of law, I see the issue of Palestine, which was recently, it was taken before also for the advisory opinion mm. on this, uh, the, uh, uh, the occupied wall. Mm. So I see it an akin situation is there. Mm. At least we must debate uh, on this front that taking the Kashmir issue post 5th of August, there are s s uh, the same questions. Mm. The uh, questions related to the occupation, questions related to the annexation, and now the, the, the uh, forcible transfer of this population by a demographic engineering. So we can at least debate on, on and uh, have some pragmatic and practical approach on the matter. Gee, Nida, your two cents on this. 
Well, um, I strongly believe that along with the China, Pakistan should engage Russia um, and to pressurize India in relation to that. And secondly, NGOs, um, European, uh, different members from political parties in European Parliament, uh, US Congress, media agencies, human rights advocates, uh, especially Pakistani, Pakistan's diplomatic uh, missions across the globe should spread awareness. And I strongly believe that United Nations Security Council um, has a very huge responsibility in relation on a behalf of the people of Kashmir and international community to resolve the matter and to uh, emphasis um, uh, in relation to stop the violations of human rights in Indian occupied Kashmir under the umbrella of Modi and his government. Let me come back to you. G. Ali Raza Saab, can you hear me now? G. 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 Ali Raza Sorry. Saab, we've been talking. No, no problem. We've been talking about uh, emphasizing this. I don't know if you heard my question earlier on. No. Um, as, G, as far as emphasizing this issue on multiple fronts is concerned, I was saying that there is, of course, the UN, there is numerous international uh, fronts, uh, international organizations we can take it forward on. And I think Nida mentioned a few ways um, in, in which we can emphasize what's happening. But as far as taking, as far as using our diaspora, Kashmiri diaspora all around the world is concerned, uh, using our, uh, you know, uh, the literary community all over the world is concerned, spreading awareness. Don't you feel that that is still an issue as far as the Kashmiri cause is concerned? Uh, I think it's uh, uh, it's the issue. That's why today uh, we uh, we have uh, organized a camp here uh, with the candlelight and just to show and to create the awareness. And I think the create the awareness in public and in institutions, in universities, and mm. uh, in the political parties, uh, local political parties here. That is very, very important. Because when it comes to the public, and the public, if they know that it's, uh, it is uh, a matter of human rights, uh, we can get the support. But how we present our case, how we can convince them, and that is the issue. And I think that uh, uh, the Kashmiri people, they should be uh, uh, take the lead and uh, uh, the, the diaspora should support all those people who are, uh, uh, who are trying to, to, uh, to convince her to, uh, uh, to launch a campaign for, for the uh, awareness here in Europe, especially in Europe. Because Europe has a very important role to play. They are an economic Have you seen uh, what kind of response have you seen uh, from Europe in particular? We have seen a very good response, but hmm. we have to capitalize on that. And that is uh, when the situation in, in uh, Jammu and Kashmir and when it comes to our uh, the main supporter and main uh, people, the uh, Pakistani people, Pakistan, and when, uh, when they see the problem, uh, internal problems or economic problems, and that's why uh, we, we have not uh, exactly get the support which we, uh, we, we try to get. But I, I think we, we should continue. And the people of Europe, I am sure, I am convinced, uh, because they, they, they went through the Holocaust, they went through the... Uh, uh, suppression. They went through through all these these things where the, what the Kashmiris are suffering now. So they they understand, and uh, uh, I think the people of uh, Europe they can be uh, uh, behind us. Right. Let me come back to you. Ji Nasir Sahib, you heard what uh, Ali Raza Sayed is saying. He's talking particularly about Kashmir and uh, EU. Uh, Europe's role in, in all of this and he's saying that he's quite happy with the kind of response that we've seen. If we, you know, mark areas in the world where we can take this, you know, perhaps more organization and perhaps more, um, you know, we can we can have uh, more, do you think more personnel, more, more people on deck as far as Kashmiri cause is concerned and that might help? No, uh, uh, let us pick this point. Uh, mm. Aliyah Saeed Saab mm. said about the Europe, you know, the, 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 uh, if Ali Raza say that, or any other Kashmiri uh, diaspora, or friends of Kashmir, the mm. Pakistanis are in the European side. Uh, th this is the time we must mobilize uh, the European Parliament members. Uh, there is a, a G20 summit going on. 
a lobby is required that uh, the can there cannot be the summits or the investments in the occupied territory mm. uh, occupied territory and the, the dispute you know there was a recent i was reading the there was an arbitration uh, on this uh, ukraine and russia that about this uh, bit business investment treaties you know how quickly they they, they they respond to this but about this 75 years of uh, the conflict and now f more than uh, two years or three years about this uh, annexation or the illegal uh, unilateral annexation of this uh, territory. Mm. So this uh, we have to mobilize in the Europe uh, for these things. And apart from the Europe, uh, Nida said about the Chinese role. Of course, China has a very important role. But uh, China, you know, China has an interest. Uh, they haven't. They won't uh, go directly with the con to the, to this conflict. But there are so other countries where uh, we can play uh, a role uh, as far as uh, this uh, Kashmir's advocacy mm. or some. Uh, uh, practical stuff. Where do you think is, is, is has the response been better um, than other areas, uh, other other countries? Uh, of course, uh, uh, post uh, 5th of August, you see China has played a, a Chinese, Chinese response as well, of course, uh, because they have a, a strong relationship with uh, Pakistan. And of, co of course, uh, we have to consider that there was an uh, during those times, there was a uh, tension between the uh, chi China and India on the uh, Ladakh border. Of course, border. I mean, I don't think that it would be wrong. I mean, of course, every country has to look out for themselves. There are other strategic interests at play, and we have to acknowledge that. Um, even if, if those are there, I mean, there can still be, Nida, you know, your, as, uh, th those are regardless of, of uh, uh, if people want to support us and, in, and, you know, against what's happening in India. That shouldn't matter, really. Well, um, um, with reference of uh, Turkey back in the day, spoke very highly about mm. um, about that and supported India, uh, supported Pakistan uh, in relation to that, and mm. uh, Arab world as well supported Pakistan in relation to the violations of human rights and uh, Modi era and fascism, extremism, mm. because um, India was hell bent in uh, sponsoring terrorism to destabilize Pakistan. Uh, for that, Kulbhushan Jadav is an example. Abhinandan. Uh, you know, a fail tried and mm. Pakistan served them a very fantastic tea as a result. Mm. So, mm. Um, mm. I strongly believe that we should engage international community at, at, at a more, more better, um, in, in a more better manner actually. Mm. But what about, what about our role as legally speaking as far as the um, UN is concerned? What is our next step in your opinion? Uh, Pakistan um, played a, a, a very significant role in the United Nations in terms of Kashmir issue. Mm. Um, well, you know what, I would like to explicit here that I'm from Pakistan part of Kashmir and with proud I can say today, uh, from childhood till, t till today, I have never ever experienced military in our streets. I have never ever experienced oppression, suppression, living my life with autonomy uh, from professional to personal to the political life. So mm. uh, in that aspect um, mm. and United Nations um, uh, resolutions, Pakistan gave me all my rights. What about the women and children, innocent uh, children, weak women in that part of Kashmir? and the violations and the breach of the United Nations resolutions and Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Mm. So India is responsible, should be held accountable at all forums. Mm. But that's okay. I mean, of course, I don't think there are two opinions on the fact that India should be held accountable, but we really want to work towards areas, ji, uh, Nasi sahab, where, you know, we, where we perhaps haven't done it as well as, you know, we, sh <coughs> we should have. As far as uh, this, I, I, I completely agree with uh, Nida oh, on this uh, diplomatic front. Mm. Uh, Pakistan has tried, uh, despite uh, all, mm. despite all the odds. Sending emissaries is concerned. Of course, as far as, as uh, they mm. have, they have. But uh, it is not a matter of an advocacy. Pakistan mm. it not, is not only the advocate of Pakistan is uh, Pakistan is beyond Pakistan for Kash Kashmir for Pakistan is beyond solidarity. It is an important party to this dispute. There is uh, so Pakistan uh, has to do more on the different fronts. Uh, I'll repeat the th third time. The present issue is about the demographic engineering. So there are a certain uh, international norms where Pakistan can uh, mm. uh, execute those and uh, of course stop, try to stop at least these uh, demographic engineering. Mm. And apart from that, there are uh, other norms as well. Mm. Uh, some think tanks are uh, working on it mm. and uh, Pakistan must support proactively if uh, some uh, Kashmiri is outside or inside or any other is trying to play his role on the pra practical fronts. So, uh, but uh, necessarily this urgent and imp important intervention for them from the Pakistan would be to stop India from uh, changing the demography of the region. And uh, of course, uh, now uh, they, have, they have started a demolition drive. 
I started the, this program with mm. the, the massive demolition of the civilian mm. properties. Mm. So the, uh, there's no, not a single statement from the, uh, the, the, the European Parliament on this. Okay. The, there was a demolition in Israel. You see the inter AP writers, they uh, report every single incident of the Palestine. Or for that matter, even the, Burma, uh, the uh, conflict of the Myanmar. Mm. But on this Kashmir, this is now uh, 11th day, a massive demolition going on. Let's ask Ali Raza Saab. Ji, Ali Raza Saab, why has there been, uh, you know, no, no comment uh, as far as this demolition drive is concerned, which is what uh, Nasir Saab is talking about. It's the 11th day, and he's saying as far as the, the United, Na uh, as far as the EU is concerned, there has been uh, no statement that has come from them, no formal recognition of what's happening. I agree with him. Uh, hmm. You know, uh, we are trying our best. We are. We already wrote the letters uh, to the uh, European Commission and External Action Service also, and mm -hmm. we are uh, uh, discussing with the member of European Parliament, and we are we are hopeful that we will we will have the the response which we want to have to uh, to convey the message to India by the European Union that they have to stop all these uh, activities and especially to release the prisoners also and uh, to, to stop the demolishing of the houses of the native Kashmiris. And uh, the demography which they are changing, we are in, uh, uh, in contact with the European uh, parliamentarians because they were so busy in, uh, the, before it was the COVID, and then now it's, uh, their, their concentration is mostly on Ukraine, but mm. uh, they promise us that they will, uh, they will come up uh, with some sort of uh, uh, response to that. Right, let me go to Nida. Nida, you think that this is, uh, of course, you know, as far as this, this demolition drive is concerned, of course, this is particularly concerning. And uh, if, can, can the UN, legally speaking, uh, you know, pass a declaration on this or can there be, a, you know, a legal remedy there? Yes, there are many legal remedies, but the question here is that whether the United Nations is ready to uh, take into account or not. But we because, have to agitate because, it, right? Because um, um, as a result of India's emerging economy and uh, um, political power, sometimes countries and people are afraid to go against them. Those are realities that are earlier That are harsh upon. realities and uh, um, double standards of the of the Western world as but well. But how will the legal remedies happen unless we agitate them, unless we start them? We need to emphasize. Pakistan is a state um, and Pakistan's government uh, should um, emphasis on that, uh, like in the past, Musharraf era, you know, um, uh, how, how they emphasize. And, um, um, as far as this particular issue is concerned, I'm asking, how do you, uh, do we agitate it? Do we take it up? G, Nasir Saab. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, of course, uh, the, uh, there are remedies, but uh, the question is that uh, how much uh, the international actors or uh, this United Nations is ready uh, to. But from the Pakistani side, uh, uh, there was an, a, a norm. Uh, I'll, <coughs> I'll recreate uh, what I have said earlier in, uh, in, the, in the PPTV or, or any other. <coughs> there was a norm that... Uh, uh, the every occupying authority they have a responsibility to protect uh, their uh, citizens. Okay. So uh, in 2005, uh, the Manmohan Singh and Samro Saab, the Pakistani Prime Minister, they were the part of uh, that summit. It was uh, almost uh, 186 countries joined together, mm -hmm. and uh, there was uh, Pakistan as a party, not Pakistan. <coughs> Pakistan must think on this uh, invoking this responsibility to protect. Uh, R2P, it is an international law, okay. quickly, hmm. so that at least uh, uh, occupying authority who is uh, India there, of course, hmm. they would be asked uh, to stop these and uh, they, 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 they may be, there might, might be any, uh, I mean, order, or not order, uh, a simple press statement uh, from the concerned quarter that they may stop it. Uh, other than this, <coughs> United Nations Secretary General under 99 has a role. If we, uh, if we read the 99 of the UN Charter, this is the fit case that uh, Secretary General of United Nations under 99 must intervene. So mm. we must think to write uh, as many le as letters from the uh, government, mm. from the uh, human rights uh, organizations, mm. the, the, the civil society. They must write uh, these uh, petitions or letters online to the uh, Secretary General mm. that 
this is the time that uh, uh, your intervention is required because it is now a beyond. Uh, <coughs> Uh, they, they, it's only the UN which can play the role because India is rampant. There is no respect to the uh, the human rights, no respect to and the humanitarian laws. And is it true that there is, of course, the issue of what's happening to Muslims in in um, occupied Kashmir, in Indian occupied Kashmir? But the spillover effect within India is also now clear as far as other minorities are concerned. Because recently we've also seen, you know, the spillover effect of what's happening as far into the Kashmiris as far uh, within India, when we talk about Christians, when we talk about yeah. other other minorities yeah. also. So it's becoming a state which, you know, is, is really, um, uh, it, it's about gross human rights violations all around. Uh, comparatively, they are not good case, but of course, yes, uh, BJP coming into power, uh, there was a spillover effect because BJP believe in the Akhand Bharat, they believe in the Mahabharat, uh, 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 India without mm. the Muslims. So they persecuted these minorities, Muslims, mm -hmm. and you know the, the, the recent uh, BBC documentary, it was an eye opener uh, what Modi's India believe and what they did and how they shadowed all this. So of course, uh, so with the there is a So with international media taking notice this way, perhaps you know all is not bleak and there is not, you know, hope is not lost completely. Nida, your quick comments before we close. Um, as reference to your question to him, I would like to uh, mention here mm. uh, the minorities, the Dalits, the uh, Christians and the Sikhs, how they are suffering. It means that uh, um, Modi's India is not ready to accommodate other minorities, mm. not only uh, violating people of Indian occupied Kashmiris, their rights, but even people living in India are not safe. Mm. Certainly, that is very true. Thank you for being with us. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you for joining us, Nasir Qadri Saab. Thank you for being with us. Nida Salam Chaudhary, thank you for joining us. Ali Raza Sayyid, thank you for being with us today. As far as the Kashmiri cause is concerned, certainly um, on the Kashmir Solidarity Day, we acknowledge uh, that we stand with our uh, Kashmiri brethren uh, in their struggle for the Kashmiri cause. Uh, but perhaps the road is long and arduous, but it will uh, one day uh, yield uh, what uh, the Kashmiris have been fighting for so relentlessly with so much courage for so long. And of course, in the meantime, Pakistan stands with the Kashmiris and uh, works zealously to ensure that their cause is taken up all over the world, on all forums, um, and agitated um, continuously, relentlessly. Thank you so much for joining us today.